Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosal here. I want to record a quick video to share something I think is going to be very, very useful for uh, learners of Hebrew, no matter where you are in the world, but particularly for um, Olim Chadashim, people who have already moved to Israel. And uh, as we all know, if that's your situation, learning Hebrew is such a extremely important part of the Aliyah process. And it's also a journey that continues uh, or should continue really from the point of arriving here with for in my case very little Hebrew to trying to eventually get up to uh, to fluency and not just fluency in spoken Hebrew but for those of us who are working in Hebrew there's also a whole different Hebrew that we have to try to uh, get to grips with and that's the Hebrew used in offices for uh, professional communication regards best wishes or you know with compliments or to whom it may concern all these kind of little phrases take a while to acquire um, now, something I could never understand, and it really, really, really bugged me actually, was why Google Translate didn't offer TTS. In Hebrew, TTS means text-to-speech, and all that means is like when you type something into your computer and you can hear a synthesized voice reading it out. So for years, Hebrew had TTS in Arabic, English, French, German, you name it, a bunch of languages. Now, in fairness, Hebrew is, by the number of speakers, was going to be far down the pecking order, but it took Google a long time to get their act together to finally add TTS. And because Hebrew is such a sort of high tech cluster, I was like, why haven't they done it? So I, I recorded a video years ago. I showed some workarounds. For instance, Reverso actually beat Google to the puncher. They've had Hebrew TTS for years. So if I put something into a Reverso Translate, my name is Daniel. So you'll get here. I'm not sure if you could hear that through the through my lab mic here, but in any way, it was a male sort of okay TTS voice. But Google Translate for me is much more useful because they have a really good app um, and uh, Google also have this really great feature uh, they added. I don't know when they added this, that like, you know, pe native speakers can tick off, verify the accuracy of translations. Now the reason, I'm just in case you're new to the learning Hebrew game, let's, just, let's put in a phrase. Uh, I am about to go into town because uh, Pesach has ended. Ani omed lechet la'ir ki Pesach histayem. Okay, um, now until recently there was not this button, this TTS button and I had given up on Google ever adding Hebrew and I logged in like, I don't know, two months ago. I tried to find a press release, some kind of announcement about this and I could not. So this revolutionary feature for Olim Chadashim was added quietly, I think. Don't. Uh, don't, uh, I may be wrong about that, but in any event, it's sometime over the last year that this was added, so. So it's a female speaker, uh, it's a female synthesized voice. Um, you're not able to change the, but that, that goes across the board if I go, if I make that in Arabic. Uh, Anna, it's gonna be too hard for me, but. It's also a female speaker. I don't think you can change, they don't have like a bunch of different voices to choose from, but uh, that's okay once you've on. Now, if you're, I was gonna say, I stopped my, myself mid-thought. If you're new to learning Hebrew, why is this so important? The reason it's so important versus other languages is that Hebrew does not have its vowels written. So just get a textual translation, unless you're certain of the vowelization, you don't actually necessarily know if that's ani omed or ani umed or lalechet or laluch, or, you know, whatever you. Eventually, learn this by context. But if it's a new word, you need to not only learn the new noun, you also need to learn the vowelization. Now, what a lot of people use is a website called uh, Morphix. So let's say if we put in a word like Pesach, um, that will give you uh, the nekudot, the vowelization. But if you're just trying to, you know, build up your, your vocabulary, you get a bunch of these. This is a real boon here because now all you need to do is listen to it. And by listening, you'll get the correct nekudot. Really want to be sure it mightn't hurt to double check on, on a dictionary like Morphix. But anyway, this is a really, really big deal. I think if, if this had been available seven years ago when I moved to Israel, uh, it would have really, really helped uh, that I wouldn't have had to spend time cross checking every new, uh, you know, every new noun or adjective I encountered on Google Translate into Morphix. There's a bunch of other resources. There's a Kitsurim di dictionary, there's online declension. I've covered a couple of them in different videos, but I think for your everyday, uh, if you've been here a while, you know the language pretty well, but you're getting stuck on words here and there. Um, I think putting phrases in Google Translate, I don't think it's a problematic way to, to learn a language. Some people would probably argue that it is, but in any event, it's just become a lot more useful for those in the process of learning Hebrew, because not only can you see 
a textual translation, albeit generated by machine, but you're able to hear a TTS, uh, text-to-speech synthesized voice, and through that you're going to be able to get the, uh, the necrodote, or known in English as the vowelization. Hope this video is useful, and if you'd like to get more videos from me, please subscribe to this YouTube channel.